it's mailbag Monday. So let's start with the traditional first opening. All right, first up we have diode quantity one. Uh huh. I wonder what kind of a diode it is. It is LEDs. Okay. No indication what color they are. So bring in ye old cheap LED tester. Looks like there's is that 50 or 100, something, I don't know. Um, okay, let's zoom in a little bit. Oh, it's a color changing LED. It's a nice, slow color changing. Blue, red, green, blue. Oh, cool. I've seen Big Clive use these things in a bunch of different projects, which is probably what prompted me to buy them. Let's see how cheap I got them. 100 pieces, 5 millimeter RGB, 2 pin, slow flash round LED lamps, rainbow blink. I guessed wrong. I thought it was 50 pieces, whatever, 100 pieces, even better. Paid 275 Canadian or 219 American for them from... Sheng Ming Electronics. Obviously free shipping. Uh, much to say about them. Uh, forward voltage 3.1 to 3.3 volts. 20 milliamps. Um, luminosity 18,000 to 20,000. Unspecified units. 20 to 25 degrees. Yeah, that's all pretty standard LED stuff. Um, by my calculation from when it showed up, this one took about 48 days to get here, which is about average from China. Okay, next let's check out one of these larger packages. It says it is one times module value 70 cents. I know I buy stuff cheap, but I don't think 70 cents is an accurate statement. Of course, after all this time, we know those are always lies anyways. Oh, looks like a kit of some sort. That's kind of interesting. I always like kits. I'm going to start doing some kit builds uh, pretty soon here. Um, a few of you guys have asked for them, so I shall oblige. Oh, that's a neat, that's actually a fairly hefty circuit board. Um, looks like all those LEDs are gonna go on in these. Oh, is that one of those hourglass things? Um, what have we got here? DC jack, switch, I see another switch, bunch of LEDs. Who are you? STC. Oh. Let's ask the schematic. It should know. Okay, what do we got here? Do -do -do -do. U1 is an STC 15W201S. There are 57 LEDs. Uh, a switch, a PCB, and a DC jack, and 4P ISP. That would be those header pins there. Um... A switch and one of whatever that is. Ah, probably that little capacitor. Right. Get in there. Where'd you? There it is. That capacitor. Okay. So what happens here? We build looks like five series strings of LEDs, four of one size and one of a different size. And they just connect to the pins of the chip. Uh, power in. It claims to have a USB power socket, but I'm not seeing it. Um, huh. Nifty. 
Oh, it's got uh, receive and transmit data, VCC up there. ISP, ISP. Curious. So mostly it seems to be just blinking the LEDs and patterns. Huh, let's check the listing, see if it says anything more about it. I remember buying something like this, but I don't remember exactly what it does. Yeah, that's the one I remember. LED electronic hourglass DIY kit. Funny electric production kits PCB board. Uh, an auction. $2.19 Canadian or a buck seventy-five American from Chip World. And there it is. Hmm, that's odd. I wasn't expecting the LEDs to do things like that. That's kind of neat. See what it says down here. There's all the parts all knowing out in a nice orderly fashion like I am not going to do. Um, okay, what do we got to say here? Under the control of MCU program, it displays analog hourglass image. The micro switch can adjust the speed of the hourglass. Um, <laughs> LED light emitting diodes that sand. Hmm. Mimicking the movement of the hourglass. The electronic hourglass will be like a real hourglass. The upper part of the sand one by one down. The lower part of the sand pile up. After the leak, we'll restart the switch click. Okay. It sounds like it's got a bit of an animation. Which is going to be interesting to see what kind of an animation they can do with... Uh, with just six series, five series strings of LEDs. No, oh, six strings. Hmm. Oh, okay. I didn't notice that before. So it's six strings, but they're in inverse, so you can actually get 12 different effects out of them. Uh, this half lit, or this half lit, you can get more than that, or if you feed it with a fast enough AC, you should be able to see both of them lit, except for uh, the flicker. And this last one's a little bit smaller, parallel string, and it's only got two going the other way. Huh. That should be kind of cool to play with. The important thing is going to be making sure that I get all the LEDs in, in the correct orientation. Okay. Next thing. It says it's 50 LED lights. That might actually be true. Sounds like something I'd order. It is. It is LEDs. Okay, that looks like less than that last bag. So that could even actually be 50. I wonder what color these ones are. Get my tester back in here again. Are these also color changers? I think they are. They are color changers again. Why would I order two different sets of color changers from two different... And they're both five millimeters, both sets. Huh. Why would I do that? 50, 100, 1,000 pieces, 5 millimeter, soul flash, rainbow, multicolor, red, green, blue, LED, 50 pieces for $2.91 from Pan Pan Supermarket in this case. And I think I figured out why I ordered two batches. This particular batch took 75 days to get here. So I'm guessing that I assumed that I'd gotten ripped off and it wasn't going to show up, so I ordered the other bunch. And then these ones showed up. And actually, um, they showed up within about four days of each other, actually, even though, like I said, uh, these ones took 75 days and the other, the, the bag of 100 only took 48 days. You just never know. Anyway, I assume these are going to be very similar um, 
yeah, 20 milliamps, uh, between 2.1 and, or between 2.4 and 3.4 volts. Yeah, that's all pretty much the same as the other ones. Although that is a nicer layout. Next up, we have one LED module. I hope that isn't more color changing LEDs. I mean, they are cool, but I already got a bunch of those. That's not even a little bit like an LED. That is another knockoff Digispark, which is an AT tiny board that, uh, that is in a USB form factor. It has boot, uh, bootloader built into it. I've got a bunch of these already, and they are really, really neat to play with. Especially if you just need a few pins. If you're controlling like three different LEDs, like I did with my Christmas lights project. Uh, if you go back to, to the December videos, you'll find that. Um, or if you're controlling things that are I squared C or controlling strings of NeoPixels or something like that, you don't need that many pins. It's a cool little thing and they're fairly cheap if I remember correctly. Yeah, they are cheap. This one is only a buck ninety one and I got it at auction, which is probably why I got it. Uh Digispark Kickstarter AT Tiny eighty five Arduino General Micro USB development board from Yan Yijis twenty sixteen or however you pronounce that. So yeah, these are just a cool little um Arduino-ish board, it's got basically six user pins, um, which is pretty impressive about an 8-pin chip plus USB. Uh, they are slightly tricky to use the first time that you've used them. There's a few a few things you have to keep in mind, uh, but there's lots of videos out there explaining it, and actually the official Digispark page, uh, web page which obviously this isn't, this is a clone knockoff of it, but the original DigiSpark page has really good user documentation explaining it. And support for Arduino IDE, yes. Yeah, it's all the things you would want in an AT Tiny board. And the fifth and final thing for today. Well, depending on what it is, I mean, we're going along pretty quickly today. I might do a sixth thing. We'll see. Um, but the fifth thing today, electronic components, no commercial value. They claim $3 US value, something that big. I think it's probably worth a little bit more. But we'll see. Ooh, there's a lot of stuff in there. some kind of a kit okay we've got a, a laser cut or or CNC milled or something uh, uh, case for the uh, for the kit here it's out of acrylic some hardware those are always kind of neat and let's get this bubble pack out of the way here's the main event I guess hmm Have we here? Oh. oh, 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 it's one of those, uh, it's one of those cheap little oscilloscopes. I remember ordering that a long time ago. Um, like back in 2017, I ordered this guy. So you can, a lot of people have, uh, have, have done these on their channels. Uh, some people, you can get them as kits. I mean, Julian Eilert, I know, built one from a kit. He had a little bit of a headache with it, but the manufacturer, because his was a sponsored one, the manufacturer helped him out. Um, I decided I didn't want to have to go through that hassle, so I got a pre-built one. Hopefully. Oh, I like doing that. Hopefully this one works first try out of the box. Obviously we're going to give it a shot here. So even though this one's not a kit, it does come with a schematic and a bit of a manual with some troubleshooting. Excellent. 
So what have we on the board here? Let's just uh, those are swamping. Let's zoom in some. So got a nine volt DC input up there. Uh, looks like there's a one K square wave output there. Uh, three volts, five volts. There, there's the coax input. Uh, AC or DC coupling or ground the probe. Uh, sensitivity range, 1 volt, 0 0.1 or 10 millivolts. Um, and then a multiplier. Some ground, what's down here? Uh, UART, TX, RX, and ground. A USB. Uh, what are these pins down here? Focus. It's like data clock, voltage and ground. Okay. Uh, a trigger LED, reset, select, plus and minus, and OK buttons. Nifty. I'm not even going to wait. I'm just going to power uh, hook this thing up. I'll build that case later. Um, that'll be its own video, I'm guessing. It's one of those standoffy feet here. I think I'll do that just in case there's any loose bits of solder or wire crud on the, on the bench. We'll be back in a second. Okay, I've got it unpackaged and hooked up. I've got it hooked up to my, uh, my little bench power supply thing, um, which is set currently for nine volts uh, power connector hooked up on one of those things and let's uh, turn it on oh, the screen's lighting up can we read that a little bit focus ah, would that be easier to read if I turn the light out oh yeah that's that's better okay so Oh, looks like it's looks like it's working. And then there was a test point over here. You see, just right there, the little square wave. So I'm gonna get that uh, clip out of the way. That scares me. I don't want that ground flailing around. Okay. So what happens if we touch? Oh, it's a square wave. One kilohertz. Come on. 50% uh, duty cycle. Vmax 1.5. Vmin 1.89. Ah, that's neat. I can't keep my fingers on that though. Fortunately, I anticipated this. I brought in our old friend, the 555 circuit. So let me just. Clamp that onto ground and that onto there. Okay, I'll zoom back in again. In, in, in. And focus. Huh. There's one thing I have noticed. This LCD or TFT, I guess they called it. Yeah, 2.4 inch TFT is not squarely mounted on its board. Yeah, I don't think I want to break it by cranking on it too badly, but that's interesting. So there's four buttons along the side there, and the manual says you select to choose which thing you want to change, and it highlights it. Uh, what's it highlighting? I can't see the highlight. Two milliseconds, okay. Five milliseconds. Okay, so that's the sweep time. That's not what I want. Auto. Okay, so that's the triggering. Single triggering, normal triggering, auto triggering. Select. Um, what is that? Looks like rising edge, falling edge okay 
Um, what does it got highlighted now? The center one, I guess. I'm going to have to spend some more time in the manual. That's kind of neat. Um, but that's just a digital voltage. I'm going to pause for a second. I'm going to go on to the capacitor of the 555 circuit, which should be a more analog voltage. Hang on for a second. I just need to turn the lights back on. And I'll, I'll be right back. So while I'm off getting that thing ready and... Uh, Connecting it up, let's just multitask for a second and check the listing. Uh, DSL-138, 2.4 inch TFT digital oscilloscope, acrylic case DIY kit, SMD soldered new. So I bought the DSL-138 welded product, which was $18.77. And I also bought the acrylic case, which was $5.88. If you wanted to do the kit, it's 1803. But really, for less than a buck, having them solder it and presumably test it, that might as well be worth it for me. I didn't, like I said, I didn't feel like uh, monkeying around with the troubleshooting it after seeing somebody's experience as Julian Eilert having trouble with it. Yeah, didn't feel like messing with it. Maybe if I get a second one, I'll do that just for the fun of it, but who knows. Anyway. From King Electronics 15, free shipping. I ordered this. Where's my notes? Uh, back last year, it took 75 days to get here. Another one that I was getting a little worried about whether it would ever show up, but it finally did. Okay, I'm back. So I've got the, uh, the lead connected to the capacitor of the 555 circuit. So this now is, is watching the capacitor charge and discharge. And if I were to spend more time figuring this out, I should be able to figure out that the two peaks are one third VCC and two thirds VCC, one third VCC at the bottom, two thirds VCC at the top. Um, but I'm AC coupled right now. What happens if I DC couple? It goes way off the screen. Okay means I have to figure out how to do that too. So, um, but since VCC is 9 volts, it should be 3 volts between the two, uh, between the peaks. Let's hold that and see. Uh, 1, 2, almost 3. Uh, does it have the V min and V max? Um... Mm, plus 88 minus 1.49. Okay, what happens if I go to DC coupling? There we go. Uh, Vmax is 5.6, Vmin is 2.6. Um, peak to peak, which is, that's what I was looking for. Peak to peak is 2.94 which is pretty close to the difference between a third of nine volts and two thirds of nine volts, isn't it? So that's exactly what I was looking for. Awesome. So it does work. Um, oh yeah. What's the frequency of my, my, uh, my wave there is about 6.2 Hertz. I'm just going to quickly take that off the capacitor and clip it onto my output signal here which is kind of spiky square waves, which is six point whatever hertz. Now then there is a calibration procedure in the manual, which I'm not going to do right now because that's not what this video is about. I'm going to do another video in the future. Once I figured this thing out, going through it in a bit more depth. Um, but the calibration procedure, oh, wait, we're in AC coupling. No wonder. If we're DC coupling. There we go. That's a nice square signal. And a scope is a powerful tool. You've just got to know what you need to set it for to get the get the uh, output view that you want. So now that we've got it on DC coupling, since this is obviously a DC square wave, it's nice and flat. That's great. It's a little bit of grass down at the bottom, but we can live with that for now because it's probably not that great a, a signal anyway. It's just coming off my 
Where is it? My little breadboard 555 circuit. Okay, that's excellent, and it works, and that's all I needed to know for now. Well, that was fun. There's my mailbag haul for this, uh, this episode. This bi-weekly episode. Um couple of assortments of LED of the same LEDs kit another DigiSpark for stock and the piece de resistance the cheap digital scope thanks for watching thanks for uh, for all your comments in previous videos and hopefully in this one too if you got something interesting to say I know that there's been a million other videos on this thing um, I'm not exactly sure what I can add to it but We'll see when I get around to actually uh, digging into it a little bit more deeply. Talk to you next week.